three, two, one. Voice with Julia, change your voice, change your life. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Voice with Julia's Technique Talks, where we demystify conversations surrounding vocal technique with behind the scenes access to great singers of today. I'm your host, Julia Rado. Thank you so much for being here, Liz. Thank you, thank you for having me. Elizabeth is a frequent guest of numerous American and international opera houses, festivals, and concert venues. She has sung with houses such as the Metropolitan Opera, New York City Opera, Florida Grand Opera, Staatsoper Unter den Linden, Central City Opera, Seattle Opera, Lyric Opera Kansas City, Madison Opera, Opera Carolina, Florentine Opera, Austin Lyric Opera, Virginia Opera, Hawaii Opera Theater, Teatro Nacional de Santo Domingo in Costa Rica, Teatro Municipal de Rio de Janeiro, Spokane Symphony, Pacific Symphony, and Orlando Philharmonic, just to name a few. Wow. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> repertoire encompasses staples of the dramatic coloratura and full lyric repertoire, including Mimi and Musetta in La Boheme, Madama Butterfly, Violetta in La Traviata, Magda in La Rondine, Contessa di Alma Viva in Le Nozze di Figaro, both Don Anna and Don Elvira in Don Giovanni, Neda in I Pagliacci, Liu in Turandot, Michaela in Carmen, Alice Ford in Falstaff, Hannah Glavari in The Merry Widow, and Anne Trulove in Stravinsky's Rake's Progress. Amongst the less frequently performed and contemporary works which she has championed are the roles of the mother and the moon in Jorge Martin's Before Night Falls, Zimfira in Rachmaninoff's Aleko, the governess in Britain's The Shrew, Screw, and the title role in Daniel Catan's Florencia in El Amazonas, which I saw you in and was absolutely brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> In Thank concert, you. she has sung the soprano solos in John Rutter's Requiem, Orff's Carmina Burana, Verdi's Requiem, Rachmaninoff's The Bells, Poulenc's Gloria, and the orchestral song cycle Honey and Rue by Andre Previn. Originally from Cuba, Elizabeth Caballero is a citizen of the USA. She speaks fluent English, Spanish, and Italian. Wow, that's awesome. Well, I uh, I wish we could do the interview in multi languages, but it's <laughs> <laughs> down my hat right now. I speak more like Italian, more than Italian. <laughs> it's a nice combination of Spanish and Italian, but I get the point across. <laughs> oh yes, yes, exactly. Just that's what matters is that you can communicate. So I have to say, I was so so thrilled to have you here because I am a huge fan of your singing. I think you Thank you. brilliantly and fine top to bottom. It's large, it's luscious. We all want your secrets. So uh, I'd love to start out with what you think of the breath. And as the breath is the foundation for the voice, how you work with the breath and what your concepts are when you're singing. Um, well, I, first of all, I want to preface by saying that I did not consider myself a technician at all. I'm not a voice teacher. Uh, and basically, everything that we're going to be talking about is stuff that works for me, that I have discovered with my teachers um, and on my own. So um, I was very, very lucky when I started uh, singing, um, lyrically singing opera, that I, I just thought was always a... Um, person that I think I had pretty much a natural talent and it was with my teachers that we discovered it more and we cultivated more and cleaned it up a little bit more but uh, but I always um just automatically um for example I never um I, I just knew how to go from chest voice to my head voice naturally no one ever taught me to do that um and I always had a natural high voice as well it was always just very easy to at that point I guess I was screaming the high notes but um so with the teachers <laughs> Um, um, I just, we discovered how to just, um, sing them. And, uh, I guess, I don't know if place is the right word. See, that's the thing that makes me nervous about talking about technique that I never really know exactly what kind of technical term would help out other people. I, it's just, I'm a very visual, visual person. 
so I think I use a lot of images and um, and um, and feeling. I definitely go a lot by feeling. Um, mm -hmm. So your question, breath. What do I? I, um, I think that in terms of breath, there are two types of schools of breath when it comes to the voice, and it's the there's there are the people that breathe and then tuck in, and then there are the people that breathe and sit on it, right? <laughs> Would you say that that's, that sounds about right? Yeah, yeah, I think okay. that's pretty. So I, I, for me, what works for me and what I've always done is the breathing and, and the tuck in, or, or how I'd like to feel it is more like a folding in. Mm -hmm. So I take my breath, and everything expands my lungs, uh, my uh, chest cavity, um, my my tummy, uh, uh, the back back of my lung, the in my back where my lungs are. Everything expands, and from there, I will gently, as I'm thinking the phrase, just start to like bring in everything in slowly. And what I do is I feel it like it all folds into itself, and it it tucks in and it goes out. I don't know if I'm explaining that well. <laughs> Yeah, but that's kind of what what I do for my breath. What seems to work for me? Mm -hmm. It's almost like a combination, a little bit of the like keeping out and keeping in. It's almost like right. Would you say it's a combo? Yeah, I get. Yeah, that is that's a good that's a good point. It is somewhat of a a combination of both because it's not a true breathing and let go, and a true breathing and sitting on it. It's just it really is just gently bring bringing it bringing in the breath and I guess gently sitting on it as it just does its own thing. And, and just little by little, it just goes away. Yeah. Yeah. No, that That's makes sense. Help. Did you have to do any special training early on with breath? And did you have any exercises that you can recall that you did? Um, I remember one of my first teachers putting um I studied with Lorraine Buffington at the University of Miami um mm -hmm. uh, she put um a belt around my rib cage or something that I could feel like a like a restrict whenever I would take my breath I would feel a tightness there so to, to learn how that feels she would put that and it, I, I remember how how good that would feel and and still to today I I enjoy the feeling of singing with a corset or I enjoy the feeling of singing with, um, with Spanx, you know, yeah, something, totally. something that feels tight in there. Cause when I take the breath, it's nice to feel how contrite it is. Yeah. And then from there, um, do, do my other little, um, breathing thing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was kind of one of the first things that I remember, um, dealing with breath. And I remember lying a lot on my back. And mm -hmm. learning how it feels to fill up the entire lung cavity in the back. Because, you know, we assume that our lungs are in the front, <clears throat> but they're yeah. not. They're on yeah. our back. And that was something that I had to, that you have to learn. And, how, and you have to learn how that feels. So I remember doing a lot of that. And, um, and putting, I remember also putting books on my, on my tummy and breathing oh, okay. and making, making that go up and down and learning how that feels. So it was. It, early on, it was a lot of like getting um, acquainted with my own breath and, and how my body uh, feels when I take a, a full enough or a deep enough breath and how yeah. I control, control the book going down. And so, yeah, it was a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. And did you, um, did you, were you trained any particular way in terms of the inhale, like breathing in through the nose, breathing in through the mouth, or does it depend on what kind of phrase you're singing? There was some talk about breathing, being specific about which one to take in the breath on, but I guess, I don't remember exactly if it was through the nose or through the mouth, but I guess through the years I've made it where it's just like, it's, it's either both or, or it's just the, because I, I know, I know that people talk about the imagery of like sniffing a rose. Mm -hmm. I've heard people like, like, or, or like taking, like feel how it takes like, a sip of water or something. So I guess that's kind of like what they, they were referring to, but it's just, um, um, I think if you just take a gentle and not, not a, like, um, I think that's basically what that entails that they just want us to take a, 
a gentle enough, delicate breath. <laughs> yeah. So if we imagine a sip of water or if we imagine just the sniffing of a flower, that's going to be a gentle inhale as opposed mm -hmm. to <laughs> <laughs> getting busy, which is what I'm feeling now. <laughs> right, right. So it's not so much if you breathe through the nose or the mouth, it's how you breathe. I gently. think so. That's, okay. how, that's how I feel that it's more. Because I, um, through the years, I, I haven't been told anymore, no, it's through the nose or no, it's through the specific channel. No, it's just, it's just a gentle inhale, delicate yeah. inhale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, and so when you were talking about when you, you didn't have to be trained how to transition from the chest voice to the head voice. But did you have a dominant register in your early years? Did you feel like one of the voices was stronger than the other? Yeah, my head, my head register was always definitely stronger than my chest okay. and lower voice. And of course, mm -hmm. there was always that, there's always the passaggio areas that we love, you know, <laughs> it, no matter how much of a natural yeah. you are, those areas are always going to remind you that it's never going to be that easy. <laughs> totally. Whether totally the lower or the higher passaggio for me for me it's always the hot that high passaggio oh my god that is the worst area to sing in. it's never it's just never gets easy um so wait what was the question i'm going all over the place <laughs> oh no no it's okay we're going there um now i was just wondering if you had a dominant register and you said it was your head voice yeah but my head was always hot easier it was just always yeah. easier to go there and i i always had to learn how to, to sing on on the proper chest and and how to not push it, which is one of the things that I discovered really, really, really early on how not to um, uh, sing, bring up my chest too high and push on it and sing it too high. And honestly, I think that's been one of my saving graces. Why in my forties I'm still I still I think my voice still sounds as, as youthful as when I first started. Um, in my 20s when I first yeah. came into the market and one of the one of the proofs of that I think is the fact that I'm still singing all the rep that I was still singing in my 20s I'm still singing Mimi, Musetta, Micaela, Don Elvira and now in my mid 40s when I'm starting to bring in a lot of the bigger repertoire I'm still able to sing Mimi, Micaela, Musetta, uh, Violetta, all that, all those roles are still very much in my repertoire and still, and feel better than ever. It's not yeah. that they feel more difficult or harder, or it's time to retire them. I think the fact that I'm still able to sing in a lot of my early repertoire while bringing in, I think that's definite proof that this technique that I have, I'm doing for myself is definitely working for me. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, and so when you were working on your chest voice, do you recall exercises or how you thought about transitioning from the chest voice into the head voice or in from the head voice into the chest voice? What kinds of things helped you, um, make that transition correctly? Or the um, placement? Yeah, it's, it's definitely vowel. The, um, I think one of the, the, the vowels that has helped me out a lot in the transition for the lower and the higher passaggio is uh, narrowing the sound a little bit more, narrowing the, the vowel a little bit more. Um, okay. So one of those vowels that has helped me out a lot is the oo vowel, um, mm -hmm. which, is, which is one that you can control how narrow you want to make. So you can open it up a little bit more if you need a more opening, or you can narrow it more. And um, it's been a life-saving vowel for me. Um, because there are moments when you do need more narrowing, you do need more, um, more, um, um, especially, uh, in that passaggio when the, th when the cords are a little thicker because of, um, allergies, menstruation, a cold X, Y, Z. So when the, the cords are, cords are thicker, we need to figure out a way of how to narrow it more and how to thin out the mucus that can form in there, um, to protect yeah. your cords because they are thicker than normal. Yeah. So um, it's it, it's been the ooh vowel for me that even even just saying ooh when you speak just okay. just feels nicer. Yeah. And I don't know. It just and, so and, and the, I so the ooh vowel even in the low. Yeah. Even in wow. the low. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of a, a um, for like like I'll, I'll I'll put in a little ooh in there. Like today, for example, 
um, I woke up with my cords thicker than normal. So, um, Z, 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 Z. See, I'm, I'm narrowing already. I'm still singing an E, but it's a narrowed Z. Z, I, I, I don't want to narrow it, for example. Z, I can still sing it, but it doesn't have that resonance. I don't know if you can hear yeah. it with these microphones. Totally. But, yeah, I can hear Or I don't feel the resonance that I need when I do narrow it. Z, and and it's it's it feels it feels really really nice yeah so yeah and no, it i helps, can hear that it helps me Absolutely. get through it yeah 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 so and even even singing even singing a vowel that doesn't have the ooh sound i i try and bring in that or I, the mental ooh or n mental narrowing just to make it slide through that pizzazzo <laughs> Totally understand that. Yeah. And do you use this ooh for your upper passaggio as well? Yes, definitely in the upper passaggio. Absolutely. That's my saving grace. Okay. And when, so let's, let's actually go to the upper passaggio for okay. a moment. Where does, where do you feel that your upper passaggio begins in your voice? I, I, I usually feel it like in around G, A flat, A. Then once I go to B flat, it's already starting to hit towards the nice territory that I like. And yeah. B and C, that's 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 where I have what I call my whistle register, where I could do my whistle pianos. Because yeah. I top at a high D. I mm -hmm. can sing a full out high D above high C. But when when I get to the E flat, I cannot sustain it. I can staccato it, but I mm -hmm. cannot sustain it. So um I think I have a, I think I have like, and I've tried, trust me, I tried so many times to try and sing the high E flat at the end of Traviata, of Sempre Libera, or, or I, I've tried doing it, it just does not happen. I do not, I cannot sustain it for the life of me. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so what I, when we, when I discovered that, my goal was to make sure that my high D was strong, and my high C and C sharp were strong. And I'm going to make sure that if I can't sing those high notes, then I'm going to make sure that I can sing a damn amazing high piano on a high C. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, you just have to, I mean, it, look, we're all different. We all have shortcomings. We all have strong point, strong things. So I think the key is to find out sh uh, strong first, uh, you know, so first, what's, what, what am I trying to say? To strong early on what your shortcomings are and find out early on what your strong points are and really work and fix those strong points make them stronger and the mm -hmm. shortcomings it's okay it's okay fix, we'll get through them we'll get through them don't don't pay attention to so much to them just fix how figure out how to get through them faster <laughs> get through them faster perfect. yeah right no no well i'm really curious so okay uh we're we're kind of jumping from passaggio now to because i i I wanted to ask you about these pianissimo Bs and Cs. Um, I think this is something a lot of sopranos would love to have. Did you have to work on this, or is this one of the things that came sort of naturally to you? You know, it was something that just came natural to me. I could not teach it. I could not tell you how I do it. But it was it was just something that I discovered on my own, and I took mm -hmm. it to Manny. And mm -hmm. with Manny, we were like, "Look, Manny, look what I, look what I could do," <laughs> you know, <laughs> and. And uh, we 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 figured out what it was that I was doing, and with him we we kind of like perfected it. And again, it's it, it it where I just put it. It's a placement, mm -hmm. and and uh, it just feels really really good. Um, and it's a way of how to protect my voice sometimes, where I'm not just always singing big and always singing loud. There are moments where I could bring in a little bit of that and protect it a little bit protect the voice a little bit and and um and take care of it you know we only have two chords <laughs> just that's the two little chords so um i i just i wish i could tell other sopranos how to do it but it's just something that it's not off the voice it, it's yeah. got core to it and mm -hmm. actually with manny it's how we found out how because I was sometimes singing too much off the voice. 
and getting mm-hmm. too far off the voice. So how to bring it in and make it sound full enough and, and, and strong enough. And that was the other thing too. My piano is never going to be the same piano as someone else. My piano might be a little louder than someone else's. My piano might be a little softer than someone else's. It's just discovering your piano and what feels good and, and comfortable and not off the voice. Because coming off the voice is just as dangerous and as yeah. tiring. As oh, for sure. So much. Yeah, and for so sure. Loud. For sure. And would you say that that's a registrational problem coming off the voice? Like, is that coming unhooked from the chest? register what do you feel is happening yeah it does come it does it does come off the rest of I don't know where it is oh my god see I'm such an idiot when it comes to like what (laughs) I do I don't know where it feels like it comes off of it but it feels like it's not connected to the rest of the 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 core of the sound like it just comes up like it just it gets a little it gets more airy and more fluttery Mm-hmm. And um, and not as 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 anchored onto the rest of the instrument when yeah. I when it's not in the proper piano. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So okay, so if we're going, I, I'm jumping all over the place because I wanted to go back to this upper passaggio, which is like the bane of you know soprano. Well, bane of really any voice type, depending on what you're where the passaggio, where is. the break is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's that so, upper um, break. Yeah, it's that upper break. Exactly. So like when you're singing something like, I'm, I'm trying to think of something in, you know, a perfect example is like Donana, like Non yes. Dia. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So what what are some tips, uh, bes- I, obviously besides ooh, that you employ to get yourself through that? Um, I guess... Um, the, oh God! For me, for Anna, for example, when you have such a tight rope of an aria, non mi dear, that's walking on the tight rope. So I think again, since I'm a very imagery, I'm a very visionary yeah. singer. I will, I will envision that me walking on a on a very on a tight rope and just like, but but the tight rope is coming from here, from from, and, and where I will sing the most perfect straight tightrope line that comes <laughs> I, I I think that's how I envision it when it comes to lines like that yeah. um the other one that that I envision a lot a lot like that too would be um Adina's aria of, okay. um uh, Brandy thank you that's another one Brandy, Brandy, I'm completely in the wrong key but you see it's like it's like that bringing the little or or the string i hear a lot of teachers talk about that string yeah yeah the string <laughs> <laughs> i don't, need, I don't yeah. know what i do absolutely but I, but I think those images help out a lot yeah for sure and with the vowel so like if you have something like non mi dear I, I assume you don't sing non yeah. mu do non mu do, right? No, but, but you feel what it. I was doing earlier that I was modifying yeah. and bringing in a little bit of that. Ooh, it's I think yeah, that's what I do. I do a, I modify. I do yeah. not okay. I, up in that passaggio area, and when especially the higher up in the stratosphere you get, mm-hmm. I do I modify to to feel more comfortable up in that yeah. valve. Era, area and I still want to enunciate the proper word but yeah. I will not sing a pure e up on a high you know I, I, it, uh, it, I have to modify I can't I can't do it it just does not feel comfortable for me yeah no I for sure now is, is the modification is it conscious or are you finding the resonance and therefore the vowel changes because I know some people think of it as a vowel change and some people think of it as staying in the resonance and that changes the vowel. Oh my God, these questions. Uh, <laughs> it's stuff because it's, it's all stuff that I never thought about and now you're making me think about it and I'm like melting little by little. Because <laughs> it's, it's stuff that I do. Um, but yeah. it, I think it just comes, you know what? It just really comes as second nature to me nowadays that I just don't have to think about it anymore. And since I don't teach, I don't think about it, you know? Yeah. So having to think about it is really freaking me out. (laughs) 
<laughs> um, I think I think I go by feeling more, and if it's starting to feel, I'll, I'll do the phrase. Like, like mm -hmm. I want, I know those. I before a show, for example, I have those phrases in my head that are always the ones that are the most challenging. So I will warm up not I warm up nor normally, and then I'll take those. Oh, I got it. Okay, this this high A. It's always a high A's, and this high <laughs> A is where um okay. I, I, let, let me do this phrase. Okay, yeah, here. Let me try and do it. Okay, no, I need that breath today. For some reason, I need the breath. Let's take the breath and let's modify. Because that's another thing too. Sometimes you need the breath. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes yeah. you know, um, and it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I, I, as a young singer, I, I, it was so hard to forgive myself for to breathe. Yeah. And it's okay. It's you're not superwoman. Stop having. Stop that <laughs> recording that was recorded in a studio in your head, playing over and over. They did it in a recording studio. They are Amen. not perfect. Okay. Right. And and it's okay. You are not that perfect too. You can take the breath. It's okay. And yeah. um, and so I had to forgive myself from that. Okay, I'm jumping all over the place. No, this is gold. I love what you're saying. I think this is very important to hear. Yeah. But it, it, knowing, it was just... Knowing your voice enough to know when you say, okay, today I have to take the breath for me to make my best sound. Yes. That's a great, great piece of advice. And it's okay. And it's, it's not, you're not a failed anything by having to take the breath. And if anyone makes you feel that way, then you're in a toxic situation. And either you need to figure out how to handle it because it's a superior that's forcing you to take that breath or, or forcing mm -hmm. you to not take it. For example, like if it's a conductor, then you need to figure out how to approach him and ask him to help you get through that phrase better yeah because and it's it's a scary situation sometimes to be in someone mm -hmm. in power telling you no you need to do it this way and and this is the only way that you're going to do it and you come across that sometimes in this profession so you need to figure out how to ask for help um and and ask the conductor to help you get through it and in a way kind of stroke the ego of them a little bit longer to get your to get your best foot forward Absolutely. and if that's what's gonna take to make you do better it's okay to stroke their ego a little bit longer and you don't have i don't you know do you know what i'm saying totally because yeah. we're, we're doing this together we're in this thing together he's the conductor he's conducting you and he wants to do it at a certain tempo for example that does not feel comfortable because yeah. let me tell you one thing that I have learned along my career is that sometimes fast tempi are sometimes more difficult to sing than too slow. Yeah. Because it, if it's too slow, you can't take extra breaths. If it's too mm -hmm. fast, you just can't take that extra breath. So you start stacking. And I remember, yes. I remember in having a situation where I was in a gig with a conductor and he was so stuck on doing at a certain tempi that was too fast for me to do it and it was a very very uncomfortable situation and it was a role that I have done so much before that it was so embedded in me maybe that was the reason why I was having such a difficult time because I was so used to singing it and singing it a certain way and um it, it taught me how to approach him and how to beg beg practically and um um, for him to let me do it a certain way that I could feel more comfortable with. Yeah, and that's that's sometimes hard to for us for some singers to do and 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 just and beg because I had I had asked nicely before and he, it was funny because he would he would try to come um he would try to do it for me but then mm -hmm. I don't know if it was a game for him that he was like no 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 let's do it fast again. So it was, it was kind of, it was a, it was a very, very interesting situation where I was in and I was yeah. not the only singer that was in that situation. Yeah. Cause we were all, we were all dealing with the tempi being way too fast for us. So what do you do vocally when that happens? And you say, you start to feel like your breath is stacking. What do you do? I mean, obviously you may maybe fixed it by the performance, but if you're having to get through that situation, say in a dress rehearsal or even in the middle of a performance, 
how do you navigate that? What are some, what are some like plans that you have in action? Um, you know, you just get through it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the thing for me that, that I tell myself over and over when I'm in a, in a situation, whether it's a performance that I'm not a hundred percent because I got an allergy attack or I woke up with a cold or a sore throat or whatever, what the one thing that I constantly tell myself that pushes me through tough situations are that my okay days, I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry if this sounds conceited, but it's what has gotten me through it. My okay days are most people's best days. And, and that's what's pushed me through it. And, and, and maybe it's a, can we curse here? Can we oh, curse yeah, on the sure. podcast? Okay. Go ahead. Maybe it's like, it's, maybe it's, maybe it's a mind fuck that I have to do to myself to tell yeah. myself that my, my okay days are most people's best days. And I'm just like, I trick myself and I just trick myself and I just get through it. And I just, and, and it, it's funny because a lot of times what will end up happening is that. It, it'll turn out to be one of my best performances. And I thought it was probably my worst. But yeah. someone in the audience will come out or, or I'll have someone that was sitting there and will be like, you sing that phrase the best ever. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I was dying. It's funny yeah. how the mind works that way. It's just very yeah. funny. how Totally. In fact, I, I often think that, you know, technique first starts in the mind. Like singing starts in the mind. Whatever you're thinking is coming out. I and that's a perfect so. example. And and you know what? It's funny because again, I, you're absolutely right. Again, it one of the most important things about sing, what we do is the energy that we get from the audience is so special. And mm-hmm. that's been one of the hardest things with this pandemic going on, how much you miss performing and singing for other people, which is why. I have said no to performing online and why I have said no to doing any of these recording things online because I need that energy. I need that emotion from the people sitting in front of me and I miss it. And I don't want to, it just feels, it feels authenticated or put on or fake to me doing it from a video camera and having people sitting out there, which is why. When, when the Met and all these other companies started doing these HD, HD performances, I think they're wonderful and they're great and they've opened up opera to a wider audience, but it's so much more thrilling when you're sitting in that audience and you're feeding your energy to the performance that's going on, whether it's a ballet or an opera or a concert or a recital, your your energy going to that performer is so exciting. And to know that you're a part of that energy and that feed and that stream feels so awesome. So I say, go sit in the theater and watch the eight performances. But I also say, sit in the theater and feed the energy to the performance and be a part of that energy as well because we need you there yeah you know that's so true that's so true Mm -hmm. and I think the energetic component (laughs) no no because I think you're you're actually tapping into something that we haven't talked about yet on these interview series it how you can't separate this kind of like spiritual energetic realm from the technical realm from what happens here in the throat and here in the body like it's not really separable and so when you're talking about being deprived of that energy from the audience, that does something to your own psyche, which then can, can block your own ability to, you know, channel, I guess. Yeah. I think that's a very, very big component that singers overlook sometimes. And it's, and it feels so amazing when we're all in that energy together. It's such a high drug. It really is. Totally. Totally. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, I, I'd love to talk a little bit about, um, you have an extensive repertoire. Okay. Your, your repertoire encompasses very different kinds of roles. And, um, you know, I only mentioned a few of them here on your bio. Um, but how do you approach singing different repertoire in terms of like the lighter more bel canto influenced repertoire 
or the more dramatic Puccini repertoire? How do you sing? How do you approach that vocally? Um, basically, I always try and sing everything with my voice. So I mm -hmm. um, and my I have a very high and very light sounding voice. It's not small. It carries. I have a voice that can carry. And that's a very, very big misconception that I encountered so much early on in my career. Because I would go on and do auditions in these small rooms. And it's a high and very bright voice that people confuse with being, with being light. Yeah. So they would hear me in these small rooms and they'd be like, oh, but can she sing me? me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can sing Mimi. Yes, I can sing Liu. Yes, I can sing Butterfly because I'm yeah. singing it with my instrument that it's high and light. I'm not trying to sound like Tabaldi. I'm never going to sound like Tabaldi. I'm never going to sound like Maria Callas. I'm never going to sound like Scotto uh, de Los Angeles. I'm never going to, I'm going to sound like Elizabeth Caballero and I'm going to sing with my voice. So yeah. the way that I sing Puccini is the same way that I'm going to sing Mozart. There is no such thing as a Puccini voice. There is no such thing as a Verdi voice. There is no such thing as a Mozart voice. The only thing that changes is the style in which you sing it. You're not going to sing Mozart the same way that you sing Puccini. You're not going right. to approach it the same way you sing Verdi. You're not right. going, you know, what I do, what I do do, haha, do do, what I do <laughs> is when I'm singing Puccini, I will vocalize with Mozart and I will vocalize with Verdi because they keep my voice always high and light. Yeah. Whereas Puccini tends to deep drop. A Puccini high B flat is very different from a Verdi and a Mozart high B flat. Oh, totally. So Puccini, yeah, the Puccini high B flat is always going to have more body and more sound and more warmth to it because of the approach yeah. to it. So if I am if I approach it with heaviness and that warmth to it, I could sing it for a while, but then I'll get into trouble. So yeah. I always have to remind me that I need to keep the height and the lightness that comes natural with my voice. And mm -hmm. what reminds me is Mozart and Puccini, high and light. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when you look at singers like like Leontine Price, for example. Oh yeah. She had a very high and light voice. The voice was always very high and light and floaty, which is why she could sing those high piano high A's. Mm -hmm. It's glorious. And the high C, the she all the way very, very, very in and to, of her career, that yes. glorious Aida that she did at the very end. Amazing. Of the I don't think she was even 60 yet. Yeah. Yeah, I think she was 50, late 50. She finally, that was her final performance. That is the most glorious high C ever. I'm getting goosebumps yes. just thinking about it. And why? Because she always sang very high and light. She never tried to sound bigger than it was. And for pe from people, I never got to hear her live, but from people who heard her live, they said that it was never a huge sound, but it always carried perfectly. Yeah. And the same thing goes for when people who heard Pavarotti, people, I love talking to people who heard these singers of the past. Mm -hmm. it's so amazing um I love hearing what they said like I was never I I'm gonna offend a lot of people here but I've never been a very big fan of Tabaldi because I always found that her voice never it always felt a little short for me on the top yeah you know but but people would always say oh but you had to hear it live what it did live it was not, and I'm like I can believe that I can I can see that I think the sound that she produced live must have been something out of this world that oh yeah must have given absolutely so, and and hearing and hearing like like a singer like like Le like leontine she must have produced such amazing sounds so much the overtones must have been so rich and so delicious and and people say that it really wasn't a very big sound, but again, I'm repeating myself, it just carried perfectly. And it's about where you put the mask, where you put where you put the voice in the mask. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be one of the challenges now that we're gonna be faced with an audition season, that people aren't aren't gonna really know 
how our voices carry in the halls now. It's going right. to be... Yeah, and it's going to be interesting. This pandemic is going to be teaching yeah. us a lot. Yeah, that's for sure. So, so when you um, like you know, you were talking about the Puccini kind of tempts tempts the voice to get a little heavy, and you have to really stay in that high and light place. Um, but do you find that there are certain liberties you can take technically with a uh, with singing Puccini that you couldn't maybe get away with in Mozart? Or do you just say no to that altogether? I think it can get a little dangerous when you do get a little quote unquote sloppy with Puccini. Okay. And that's when, that, that's when, when a lot of the bad habits start to creep in, which is why whenever I sing a Puccini role, I love to go back to Mozart and and Verdi and force me to feel naked again. Yes. Because yeah. with both of those, with, with, with Bel Canto, which is what uh, Donatetti is and, and even early Verdi and, um, and Mozart is not considered Bel Canto, but it, 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 it is naked. It is very naked singing, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, 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 you, you're so exposed that any technical flaw any any technical thing that's starting to creep up will show up immediately. So I even in the middle of of a Puccini run when I'm singing Butterfly, like I said, I will I will vocalize with with Traviata sempre libera. And if I'm having trouble singing those runs, if I'm if I'm having trouble sustaining that B flat because it's a much easier B flat, mm -hmm. then I'm gonna it's not gonna the the Puccini B flat is gonna be even more difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, it's it's always I'm always I am always reminding myself, yeah, not to get not to get uh, lazy, not to get sloppy, yeah. for sure. So if you're in a situation like that, like let's say you're vocalizing one day and you find oh okay my voice is not that I want it to. What what kind of process do you go through to get your voice in the condition? In the world? I'll, I'll do my normal vocalize, like right before a show, I'll do my normal vocalizing and I'll, um, I'll feel, okay, um, my breath is a little tight today. So mm -hmm. let's, let's get the breath going. Let's get the breath going. Um, and then, uh, if it's still, if it's still too tight, I, again, I, I met, it's funny. I measure myself with Traviata a lot. Yeah. I go, I go, I go always to, to the Sempre Libera. Um, I'll, I'll start on the, the the high C flat or C, uh, it's B flat is fine. D flat, sorry, don't short myself short. If that high D flat feels great, then if I'm having trouble, how how am I approaching it? If I can sing it, then then I can do everything else. Because if I'm having trouble singing it, then my voice is too heavy and too weighted. Then every must feel too heavy and too weighted. That's how I right. grade myself. That's that's kind of how I, how I measure myself. And everyone okay. has to find their, 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 their report card. Yeah. So, if, so if you find that, yeah, no, totally. So if you find yourself that it's too weighty and it's not working, do you have a, a system that you do to maybe thin out the voice to then get it working more easily? I don't know what I do, but yeah, I guess there is something that I do that I and I I have to take the weight off the voice. I have to take the uh, the because that is not a natural sound for me. I think we 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 talked about this earlier, not in this talk, but earlier when we had her, when we talked about how there are voices that are more naturally more frontal and voices that are naturally more back voice or more. Yeah. I don't know if back back voice is the but more uh sound. I yeah. have a more frontal sounding voice, so. Mm -hmm. For me, I always have to remind myself to go to my natural space yep. and to remind myself that I have to bring in a little bit some of the this unnatural sound that I yeah. discovered, you know? <laughs> my, my voice is always just going to go there naturally. So right, I have to right. remind myself of this nat natural sound and how to bring it more, more in the happy middle that with yeah. singing is what's going to 
feel good and get the yes. weight off and get the weight off that I'm trying to find naturally and, and bring in and, but not go too much to the strength and sound either. Right, right. <laughs> that is more natural for me. Am I making sense? I feel like I'm rambling. Totally. So much. <laughs> no, no, no. Wonderfully. You're making sense. Totally. Now, um, it's coloratura. Let's talk about coloratura for a second. Do you have a process for learning and putting coloratura into your throat? Is that something that came naturally to you? Did you have to work on it? Um, I did. I had to work on it a little bit. Um, um, the way I just work coloratura is I just break it down. Um, I, I try and find a pattern that the natural coloratura has naturally. And when I find that pattern, then um, I'll see if it works well for me. And um, like if it's a, for example, non mi dir ta 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 and okay. if our conductor approves, then yay. <laughs> <laughs> and do you feel that um, coloratura is very much dependent on how you're using your breath? Yeah. Yeah, coloratura is, is all about breath and not letting it all out, which is why, again, that exercise about the breathing and bringing it in slowly, slowly. And I really like that exercise about putting the books on my belly and and putting them up and gently forcing the books to not just to drop like I will put like a shitload of books on me not just one book like it'll feel yeah. heavy and I have to force it force it up there and slowly just gently bring the books so yeah it's all about how to maneuver your breath and not let it out <laughs> yeah that's awesome. So I have a question that I'm asking everybody as kind of our, our closing question. Do you have a desert island vocalese? What is your one vocalese that you would go to to get yourself ready to sing in like two minutes if you needed to? Um, the one that gets my breath going. And it, it's one that um, it's just a Z. I start on a Z, Z, and I go to A. And, and it's Z, A. Z and I make sure that the final one is it's vibrated enough because that's making sure that my breath is fully connected. So it's Z Z Z Z. See, that's already getting. I'm already feeling my breath. Z Z Z. And that's getting. It's. It, I'm feeling the connection already happening. So that's my go-to. That's my, that's what gets me going, makes me realize how lazy my breath is that day, or if I'm in good breath, I can feel already if my cords are too thick, or if my cords are fine that day, that's getting everything kind of waking up and percolating. Yeah. Okay. And it, do you take that high or do you stay in the mid range for that? Uh, I, I, I take it everywhere. I start out, I start out low and then I go all the way up to the top. Not to the top in the stratosphere, but I do try and make and do the, try and get through both passages. Passages. <laughs> both passages. <laughs> That's okay. That, I like that one. That's the, it's short and sweet. Yeah, it's short and it just, it feels like it's getting everything working and, and, and there's another one that, mm, just like warming up, but you know, I've always been such a, such a like, I, I throw myself in deep in right away. So I don't, I, 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 I know some singers like to warm up slowly with <laughs> lip thrill, thrills and um, uh, how do you say that? Lip, thrill, lip thrills. Thrills. Uh -huh. thrills. thrills. Um, they like to warm up with that and, and getting everything like slowly but surely. But no, I think I like to just like, that one gets me going right away. Okay, there's gunk there. Let's, let's move, let's work that gunk. <laughs> I want to know what's going on right away. And yes. Yeah. 
Yes, exactly. <laughs> Get to the I'm problem. Very impatient. Don't hide that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm very I'm a very impatient singer. <laughs> I love it. I love it. As some of my teachers will tell you when I'm trying to fix something right away, we've gotten into some discussions. <laughs> no, but I got to get it. <laughs> got to get it now. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, so Liz, where can we find you on the interweb? Um, well, I got good news today. Um, I, uh, I've been kind of like laying low on the internet with this whole pandemic thing, because it's been it's been a, it's been difficult. Uh, this was going to be a very good season for me. I was going to have a, um, I, I've always had there a lot of success in the United States. I've been a very successful singer in the United States, but for some reason, I've had a lot of um, hard time singing in Europe. Haven't maybe haven't found the right management, or um, I don't know what's happened. So, unfortunately, there is if you in the United States, if you don't have European credentials. Somehow you're not looked at the same way. And it's, a, and it's a shame because there are so many wonderful, great American singers that we just don't have a lot of European credentials. And Absolutely. It, but um, I, for me, it was finally going to start changing this year because I was finally, I, I made my debut in Madrid and I was going to make my debut, but I, which I made it earlier while I was in Madrid. I got to sing in Stuttgart. I, 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 I did a quick jump in for a bohem over there while I was in Madrid. So I got that out of the way. But then I was going to go back to Stuttgart to sing again over there. Anyway, long story short, I was going to start singing a lot more in Europe. And I was really, really looking forward to this um, new look about me as a singer in the United States. People, mm -hmm. were, I was hoping that people would start looking at me. And I'm getting older. I'm starting to add more repertoire in my role in my rep um um uh, more of the quote unquote big girl rep and um i'm looking forward to a lot of that so when all of this started to happen it was like damn it i have to wait again i have to wait another year because um all of these things will happen but they're just going to happen another year down the road and I'm getting older, I'm not getting younger. So that fear is inside of me too, where I don't want to miss the opportunity. It's right, it's so close. I don't want to lose it, it's right there. So right. I, 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 it was hard. It was hard to see all that kind of fall beneath me. Yeah. Um, and just tell myself, it's gonna happen. It's just gonna happen a little later. Patience, patience, right. you've waited this long. It's right. gonna happen. Totally. So yeah. I decided to just recluse myself and not be so much out there and, and, um, and let everyone just do their thing. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but I got good news today that one of the roles that um, I've been putting off for so long, for so, so, so long was Tosca. Um, and so for so many years, people have been asking me, do you sing Tosca? Do you sing Tosca? And I, I, I've been saying no for so long because it's a big girl role. And I even called Florencia en el Amazon as my mini Tosca because yeah. it is, it feels totally. like a mini Tosca. You know, it's, a, it's not. Um, so once I tackled Florencia en el Amazon and once that felt good, then that's when I said, okay, I talked to Manny and I'm like, Manny, this role is coming across again. What do you think? So with Manny, we decided that it's about time and I'm going to finally sing it this summer. In uh, um, the the festival is in Minnesota. It's called Northern Lights Festival, and uh, it's going to take place in July. And it's I think they're doing a concert version of it. I don't know how they're going to do the chorus. I don't know how they're going to do the orchestra. I don't know how we're going to do everything. I don't know if we're going to wear face shields, masks, we'll pick <laughs> all of that. How we come? I don't know. If we need to sign a waiver. This is we're going to get stuck in our apartments. We'll figure out <laughs> all of that comes along. But the good thing is that I'm excited to come back after all of this. And I'm going to do it in a role that I have shunned away for so long. But I'm going to tackle it and I'm going to dive in head first, like usual, Amazing. with my voice and with my instrument. And I'm so excited and so looking forward to it that I got the okay today. The board gave the okay today. So that's oh, my big 
That's congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That is awesome. That's that's a big deal. I mean, that's like a huge accomplishment when you add your first Tolka, I think. You know, it's it's such a funny this is such a funny career because we want everything to happen so early, so fast. Because when we graduate college, we're in our mid-20s. And all of our friends that are studying something that's not music, vocal related, voice related, they're out there already in their jobs, making their their good money, their their, their benefits, everything. And we're here probably waiting tables, working temp jobs, auditioning, you know, trying to get her. You know, it's so long. And it's so easy to just throw in that towel and give up. Yeah. So, so easy. So this career is, the more you're in it, the tougher your skin has to get, the more your tears, the sweat, every, mm -hmm. it, it's just a very hard career and it's never going to get easy. And the more you're in it, the more difficult it's going to get, the scarier it gets. Because when you get a taste of that delicious chocolate cake, that this career is, you just want to keep tasting it and you don't want to let it go. Yeah. And it gets very desperate at times, very lonely at times, very, you don't, you don't want to let it go. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just have to because your career is coming to an end or, and I don't know, it's, I, I've just had, this this pandemic, man, I've done a lot of thinking. I've done a lot of thinking as to what the future will bring for me, what I want to do in the future. Do I want to stay involved in music? Do I I definitely don't want to be a teacher. Not a voice teacher. <laughs> um I, I do I even want to? So just enjoying every day, moment by moment, carpe yeah. diem, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I well, feel like I'm having a therapy session. <laughs> you know what, though, Liz? I think people need to hear this. And especially people need to hear this from somebody like you. I think this is a very powerful perspective that you can share to young singers. I think that's really important. Yeah. I really feel for the young singers nowadays because this is hard, man. This career is so hard. And I, I'm considered a successful singer. And I'm having trouble trying to stay afloat even before this pandemic happened. So it's a, there's such a saturation of singers out there, such a saturation of music schools out there. Yeah. And there aren't enough. The, I don't, it's scary. It's, I don't know if there's enough work for all of us. Um, and it's turning a lot of us into nasty people because we're all afraid. Yeah. Fear does that. So we just need to remind ourselves that, that people, people need to stop taking advantage of us. Our companies need to stop abusing us. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're just doing all of this together. We just want to make music. We just want to make people happy. We right. want to make ourselves happy. Yeah. It's all ego-based. It's all ego-based at the end. So why can't we all just try and do it together? Yeah, exactly. And exactly. I, need, I need to remind myself that because as a, as a young, as a not so young anymore lyric soprano, when I see the young lyric sopranos popping up, I'm still like... Oh my God, they're there, they're there. And so it's so scary. It's so scary because, and it's so easy to go in there. And I don't want to see myself fall in there. I don't want to fall there. So I, I'm almost tempted to say that I'm, I will get out before I turned into that person that I, and I'll do something else that will make me happy. Cause that, that doesn't make me happy. Those negative emotions of, of, a of, a fear of losing my job or a fear of someone taking over. Or, I don't, that's not, that's, it doesn't feel good. So I just rather do something else. Yeah. And make yeah. singing a hobby. Yeah. So, well, yeah. I, yeah, I totally hear you because we're all in this for beauty and sharing something higher than ourselves. And if we're caught in this kind of rat race that causes us to become people that we don't want to be, it's, it's, 
almost for naught. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. so easy to fall down that rabbit hole. So, so yeah. easy. Yeah. Well, I just, I thank you for your candor and your openness because this is something people need to hear. You know, and if there's anything that I can offer young singers, if they, if they ever have any questions or, or, or any curiosity or anything like that, I'm all, they can always find me through Facebook, on my web, on my, my web pages there. Email me. I get those emails and um, I'll email back or, or I'll give you my phone number and we can text back or whatever. I mean, I think it's a, it's a time that we all need to be here for each other. Um, and, um, and if there's any advice that I can offer, I'll try my best. I don't have all the answers to the questions. I'm trying myself, but yeah. that's all we can do, I guess. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Liz, thank you so, so much for being here. I feel here. like I rambled so much. No, it, it's, <laughs> we love your rambling. Keep rambling. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. much. You're so nice. So very nice to include me. I'm very touched. Oh, well, I, I'm touched that you're on my program. This is everyone's gonna love this. People are gonna love this interview. And I think you you have said the things that people need to hear right now. So thank you. Thank you. Take care, Liz. Bye.